Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be speaking to us about um, experience in blood transfusion or also you can look at it as the activities that goes on in blood transfusion. You know, some of you guys have contacted me making this request if I could talk about someone's experience in blood transfusion and also another person have asked if I could talk about the activity that goes on in blood transfusion like from the when the sample comes in to what happened to, you know, to the end. So I'm going to try to give us overview then of what that goes on in blood bank and hopefully you can look at this overview and then formulate it as your experience in blood transfusion. I've made some of the videos already, okay, but where possible, I'm going to highlight you or refer you back to the thing that I've said in the past. But before we go ahead, my name is Dr. Emmanuel Lobodo. I've been working in the UK as a specialty biomedical scientist and I'm a lecturer in biomedical science here in the United Kingdom. So yeah, let's get into this. Now, in blood bank, what you need to know is that it starts from sample acceptance. So from sample acceptance, we then process the sample. After we finish processing the sample, depending on the result, we can decide to investigate other things that goes on in that sample to be able to understand what is going on, okay? Now, outcome of the investigation will determine if we want to issue blood to that patient, what we might need to issue, the things we can consider before issuing that blood, okay? From the patient record or the result or the condition of the patient, patient will determine the kind of blood product that can be issued okay whether we're going to issue red blood cells or platelet or ffp or cryo so it's dependent on the condition or what is required okay let me see if i can recap this so now in sample acceptance you now have to receive the sample and in blood bank we are looking at five major identifiers so if you've not watched my video on sample acceptance you can watch that so we're looking at five major identifiers and once we are sure that everything is okay with that very sample what we then need to do is to centrifuge that sample when we centrifuge the sample obviously you are going to have plasma you have buffy coat then you have the red blood cell now depending on what you want to do also some of the tests like when, when you want to do direct cum test or direct antiglobulin test you might need to use the whole blood okay or maybe when you want to do phenotype you can use the whole blood but let's not worry so much about that okay because you can still do that from sample that you separated all you need to do is to take red blood cell to be able to do it now let's let's move on with this now once you've accepted the sample you then have to use analyzer to run that very sample but before you run the sample you then need to make sure that your analyzer have passed the quality control okay now what quality what kind of quality control do we do with the, this analyzer the question then is what does the analyzer do so most times what the analyzer is going to run for you routinely will be blood group and antibody screening and in that blood grouping is going to do both the forward and reverse grouping and of course it will do the antibody screening and some of the analyzer as well you can also look at antibody panel but what it then means then is that you then have to first of all use a known control sample okay from this known control sample put it in the analyzer to run that sample to determine the blood group or the antibody screening once everything is consistent as the known sample then that means that your control has passed obviously if it does not pass okay for some reasons you then need to investigate why in most cases it could be because that sample is insufficient or you've not correctly separate them very well that means you've not properly centrifuged it whichever way you investigate it but once it passed you cannot be able to run your sample. I think before I move on with this, I want to first of all mention that in blood transfusion here in the United Kingdom, there are two main uh, analyzers that we use here in blood bank. We use what to call AutoVision or we can use what to call BioRad IH1000. Two of them using what we call ABO gel card. So what do we mean by ABO gel card? That means blood group A, blood group B, blood group O, of course, blood group AB. So we use ABO gel card, okay? Now, that is two of them uses it. Also use IgG card. But what the difference between BioRad 
I had 1000 and that of the auto vision is that when you come to the screening cells okay the auto vision uses like about three screening cells okay while with the bio right it uses two screening cells screening cell I mean is the cells that you're going to use to screen whether the antibody is present or not now let us look at the sample processing here when you talk when you talk about blood group and antibody screening sometimes if you go for interview they may not give you this few words they may say group and save it means the same thing that means blood group and antibody screening okay now what happened is that with the forward grouping remember it is a gel card so with that gel card you're going to have column a column b column d and control then a and b okay now with that column a you are going to have a gel embedded inside it that gel that is embedded inside it is called anti a sera gel which is a kind of a bluish you know in color so it will be embedded there then you now have the commercially prepared anti sera b embedded on the column b which will like like a yellowish color okay then you have anti d sera as well which is now also embedded on the D column, which is like colorless, you know, color, okay? Now, you now have the control. With the control, you expect it to be negative because though there's a gel, but there's nothing really in that gel, okay? Now, that will measure the forward group. Why? Because these are the uncommercially prepared anti sera embedded there. Then you can now have the, um, the what the analyzer will do is to suspend the red cells in a normal saline or any dilute, okay, that is using. So once it's suspended there, it can then mix it, add it to column A, column B, column D, and the control. I hope that makes sense. That will measure the forward grouping. While under the reverse grouping, inside the analyzer is A cell and B cell. What is going to happen then is that the A cell, okay, would now be put in the A1 column. Okay, why the B cell will be the analyzer will pick the B cell and put it in the B column. Then it can then pick the patient plasma and add there. Why is it doing that? It's basically acting on the opposite of what happened in the forward group. What happened in the forward group is that it's anti sera, that is antibody embedded on the gel. Then you now add the patient cell, red blood cell, which should contain the antigen. So where possible, where appropriate, then it can give a reaction. And the reaction that it gives you can give you an indication of the antigen that that patient has. Okay. While when it comes to the reverse grouping, what it it now changes from the known A cell the, or the known B cell, the analyzer will then add the plasma which should contain antibody. Okay. Now, if the patient has any of the antibodies that is you know similar with antigen A or antigen B, it will give you a reaction. Now, with the antibody screening, like I've said, you may have screening cell one or two or three. What the analyzer will do is to pick the cells and put them on different columns then add the patient plasma so what happened is that when the result comes out if the antibody screening is negative it means that the patient does not have any of the antibodies that is in those antigen cells okay but if the antibody screening comes out positive it means then that there is antibody in the patient plasma that has reacted with a specific antigen in any of the cells or in all of the cells I hope that makes sense. So that is our routine test, blood group and antibody screening. Now what happens is that when the antibody screening becomes positive then, you then have to go ahead and do antibody panel. So if you've not watched my video on antibody panel, you can watch it. So when you do the antibody panel, it allows you the opportunity then to be able to identify the particular antibody that is present. Sometimes you may not be able to identify the particular antibody, it might be non-specific and in very rare cases you might get something like no antibody detected. Anyway, so from the result of that, it cannot have effect on issuing blood. But before I go ahead with the issuing blood, there are other tests also that we do in blood bank. So I've mentioned blood group and antibody screening, I've mentioned antibody panel. Another test that we do is what we call serological cross match. So in serological cross match, you are also going to use IgG card. In that IgG card, you are now using it to now 
um, you use the donor cells against the patient plasma, okay, to do your cross match. Obviously, if it is compatible, you can issue the unit. If it is not compatible, you don't have to issue the unit. Now, another test that we we'll do is what we call Clahawas, okay? So with this Clahawas, it helps us to measure maybe where a, a woman that is pregnant, that is antigen D negative, whether there's a fetus maternal hemorrhage going on inside that woman. So if you've not watched my video on Clahawas, you can also watch it. So that's also another test we we'll do, Clahawas. Then also, another test we we'll do is something like D80 or what people call cum test, direct antiglobulin test or maybe a um, direct cum test. Okay. Now in doing this thing, you can do what we call polyspecific. Okay. Or you can also do what we call monospecific. With polyspecific, if you don't know whether it is IgG antibody or whether it is a complement like C3D, but with the monospecific, you can be able to know the particular one that is present, whether it is IgG antibody or whether it is C3D or any of the complements. I hope this makes sense okay now from the result you get now I'm going to look at what happened in the issuing of the blood in the issuing of the blood there are two ways you can issue blood in fact there are ways you can issue blood depending on the situation number one by electronic issue which I've also explained you can watch my video on electronic issue number two is by serological cross match again you can also issue blood due to emergency okay meaning when it comes to emergency you are not doing cross match or as the case may be you don't know the patient whatever there are many conditions there are many situations that can lead to that which of course you can watch my video on emergency scenarios as the case may be now so in issuing blood it can be by electronic issue it can be by serological cross match or it can be in emergency so when you talk about electronic issue this is common when we there, there's no manual manipulation of the result or there's no history of antibody the person does not have any antibody the person have a current group that will allow you to do electronic issue okay now but when it comes to serological cross match it has to do with maybe if the person has an antibody or any of the results have been manually edited which i've also explained on my previous video so it has been manually edited that will not mean that the patient is no longer allowed for electronic issue it has to be serological cross match now in some cases you don't know the patient what are you going to do then in a case of emergency you then have to issue the blood based on emergency so these are the things that happen now let us now talk about which product can be issued you can issue red blood cell you can issue platelet you can issue a fresh frozen plasma you can issue cry precipitate and in very rare cases it can also be issuing of white blood cell okay now these are the there are reasons why this can be issued which again i don't really explain for example if somebody is anemic or bleeding as the case may be you have to give the person red blood cells okay and of course if for whatever reason you think okay there is low uh, clotting factors or in a case of bleeding whatever reason you cannot give ffp and of course if you are suspecting low fibrinogen you can give cry precipitate okay so so these are the reason why you can give this but also there are other medicinal products we we'll give in blood bank like maybe anti d okay for pregnant women okay who are antigen d negative okay i've also explained that on my previous video you can watch it now you can also give something like albumin as well we can also give what to call otterplex okay which can help maybe in reversing anticoagulant as the case may be so these are other these are medicinal products you can issue meaning you can issue you know blood product like red blood cell like i've mentioned then you can also issue medicinal product like i've also mentioned that is when it comes to issuing blood and of course each of these very blood product has different storage temperature of course even though they have storage temperature it also determine on the state of the product for example when ffp have been defrosted because ffp come frozen okay so once it's defrosted the storage temperature changes and the duration also change the same thing is also applicable with cryo precipitate okay some of these very blood products can have special treatment the patient might have a requirement that means some of these blood products will require will have, there has to be a special treatment like a radiated blood product i've explained it on my previous video hla match i've also explained it on my previous video now there's also another thing we call exchange blood transfusion okay so there's a special requirement for that okay maybe in a case of a sickle cell patient we also have a requirement for issuing blood for a sickle cell patient there's a lot of requirement we have even when we're issuing blood for a newborn baby or someone who is a neonatal or maybe 
a pediatric patient, there are different requirements. But what I really want to bring to your attention here is that even though we issue this blood product, this blood product in some cases might have different requirements, okay? Like irradiated, like I've mentioned, HLA match, okay? Or maybe some other requirements depending on the condition, like maybe in a case of action blood transfusion or intrauterine blood transfusion or maybe a sickle cell patient, okay? So that would determine the requirement of what is going to happen, okay? Now, another thing I want to bring to your attention is this. In blood bank as well, you know, when you are doing your antibody screening or antibody panel, you also need to be aware of the fact that they are told to call cold antibody. Of course, most of these antibody will be warm antibody because we are going to incubate them at 37. Okay, but some of the antibodies, you can only deter them at the low temperature. So you might need to also mention something like cold antibody, okay? And this can be common when you look at something like anti-M, okay? Now, another thing that you might need to see in blood bank is, it has to do with the temperature, monitoring what is going on in the lab in terms of the temperature storage of the refrigerator or maybe the freezer or the platelet agitator. So you need to make sure that the temperature temperature of the fridge or the freezer or platelet agitator, even the temperature of the laboratory, you know, is as recommended, okay? So that way, if you notice that there is, is going out of range, you need to find out what the problem is and try to solve the problem before it completely go out of range. So these are the common activities that happens in blood bank. Now, in some cases, depending on the situation, which of course I've also highlighted on my previous video, you might need to contact hematology consultant. In some cases, okay, depending on the situation, you might it might depend on the clinical decision to make your decision. But where applicable, before you can even make those decisions, sometimes you then need to allow the clinical decision to authorize you to sign a concessional relief form. And of course, I did mention on my previous video where necessary, where you might need to contact hematology consultant and also add that there's what to call OBOS okay so we can in blood bank we also order blood from the NHS BT okay once we order blood from the NHS BT they can also deliver what we have ordered okay so OBOS is used in ordering blood hopefully I've been able to tell you the activities that goes on in blood bank now another thing that I also almost forgot to mention was the fact that when it comes to a pregnant woman once the antibody screening is positive you've identified the antibody there is also need to also quantify that antibody. You are quantifying the antibody because it will help you to know whether or not that will impose a risk on the, the baby that, that that patient is carrying. So this, I've been able to highlight, you know, the experience in blood bank, meaning the activity that goes on in blood bank. So if you go for an interview and they ask you, please, can you talk us through your experience in blood bank or in blood transfusion? What you need to do is, Take them to from sample acceptance, take them to on sample processing, you know, the things that I've mentioned. You can mention the analyzer that you use. You can also mention maybe factor that may affect the blood group and antibody screening, okay? You can mention things like issuing blood products, okay? You can even mention when to issue the blood product. You can mention medicinal product issuing. You can mention any of these things that I've highlighted. So if you, if you get such questions, what they want to know is what activities goes on in blood bank and why do we do what we do okay hopefully with that you'll be able to explain your experience in blood bank hopefully i've been able to answer this question please if feel free to put a comment on the comment section tell me what you think about the video can i ask you as well to like share and subscribe feel free as well to join a membership of youtube channel by clicking on join okay if you appreciate this uh, video you can also appreciate the video by clicking on the super thanks thank you very much and i wish you all all the best thank you very much till i come back away again bye bye